my name is Cameron Smith. I am the Liberal Democrats candidate for the federal seat of Maribyrnong. I've uh, grew up and lived in the northern suburbs of Melbourne my whole life. I originally uh, lived in Reservoir and then later Hillside and these days uh, reside in Ascot Park. I run a small tax and accounting practice in the uh, suburb of Travancore, which is also in Maribyrnong. Uh, here I practice as a chartered accountant and specialist tax advisor. Uh, I have several staff and uh, my day-to-day -day activities are, are assisting and helping small and medium businesses. Uh, in that role, I obviously deal with many different government bureaucracies, no less than the tax office in the main. And I see the impost and the, uh, I guess, the strain that these bureaucracies place on small and medium businesses. Freedom matters, so make your vote count. For more information, you can check our website out, or you'll find our Freedom Manifesto, which sets out our 10 core policies and beliefs that we're taking to the federal election. Authorised by John Humphreys for the Liberal Democratic Party, Mount Waverley, Victoria. Hello, my name is Cameron Smith and I am the Liberal Democrats candidate for the federal seat of Maribyrnong. I just want to make the very clear point that the Liberal Democrats are not the Liberal Party. Although we carry both carry the name Liberal, we are the party that actually believes in classical Liberal principles. Principles of small government, more freedom, low taxes and personal responsibility. If you're looking for a real alternative, Vote for the Liberal Democrats. Authorised by John Humphreys for the Liberal Democratic Party, Mount Waverley, Victoria. Health department officers entered a Sunshine North doctor's surgery just after lunch. Dr Mark Hobart is under investigation by the health department for allegedly handing out fake COVID vaccine exemptions. I've just been uh, invaded by seven authorised officers from the Department of Health and they seized my confidential patient files and my appointment book. The authorised officers were in the surgery for several minutes. You've got to have an exemption or the double vax to work here. I am double vax. Dr Hobart is openly angry about the government's pandemic rules. There is no privacy and confidentiality with medical files anymore. The new laws have thrown this out the window. The health department has said it's concerned a small number of doctors across Victoria are providing exemptions to people who don't meet the criteria. Dr Mark Hobart has been forced to abandon his Sunshine North clinic, but his patients refuse to abandon him. I just came here to show my doctor my support. He shouldn't be having to go through this and what they spin about him, it's not fair. He's very calming, very understanding. Um, and it's a shame, really a shame what they've done to him. But he has been suspended from practising medicine anywhere in Australia as he's investigated over claims he issued fake vaccine exemptions. The health department raiding his office yesterday. Tell us, you know, uh, why have you joined GAP? Yes, so uh, I'm a general practitioner. I graduated in 1981. I commenced general practice in North Sunshine in 1985, where I worked until November last year, and I was uh, suspended by APRA and my practice shut down by the Department of Health Victoria because uh, I would not release private and confidential patients' files, and I was uh, issuing temporary vaccine exemptions for distressed patients. And I'm currently in the process of um, taking APRA to the Supreme Court uh, for a judicial review um, in order to eventually remove my suspension. So they've just come to uh, a, a reasonable belief, they call it, <laughs> that on the on the basis of uh, their what information they have, that I'm a risk to the uh, public, and uh, I need to be uh, put the public safety. They need to put the public safety first yeah. and uh, suspend my registration. And I believe there is legislation and plans ahead to seize all patients' data without their ability, the patient's ability to say no. So this is uh, this is against fundamental medical ethics, 
and um, that's one reason why I joined GAP. Yep. Well, the, the lockdown certainly contributed to uh, anxiety and depression, uh, and it's disturbing that we can't get accurate figures of the uh, numbers and mm. including numbers of suicides that have occurred. And the other thing I saw was the extreme anxiety and depression uh, which people had when confronted with the threat of the vaccine. Yep. Uh, they had to have the vaccine. If they didn't have that, they couldn't work and support their family. And they were incredibly de um, distressed. And when I asked them if they had suicidal thoughts, about 50% said they did. Y yes, well, if it was just, um, if it was just not being able to go to a restaurant, I guess that mightn't bother everybody. But when you can't work, now you're talking about serious stuff. You're talking about people's livelihood. 100%. I think it's fair to say you're not an anti-vaxxer either. No. You're a typical, what we call... A... Yes, and even more basic than that, no medical treatment should be forced upon a patient without their consent. I, I love it. I'm here to serve the public, so I'm really following an act of service. For too long, politicians have pursued their own career and other agendas, and it's time to unite Australia and bring us all together. We don't want to be over-governed, so I'm here to make that change. Authorised by Darren Bazenko for the United Australia Party. One of the biggest things I'm planning for voters once elected is to minimise government waste and spending and reduce the size of government. This also helps keep the government rules and regulations to a minimum, which are actually impinging every part of our life. Australia is one of the most over-regulated countries in the world. And so I want to be part of reducing that. And I want to see the public have some of the fun and freedoms that we used to know here. Authorised by Darren Bazenko for the United Australia Party, Brisbane. One of the things that made me stand up and put my hand up for election is that watching the last couple of years, I can see Australia in a real downward spiral and the ordinary Australian suffering. My grandparents fought in the war and they didn't fight for this. So the least I can do is stand up and really make my part of the change. Authorised by Darren Bazenko for the United Australia Party, Brisbane. United Australia Party will govern better by bringing back accountability and integrity into government. Frankly, I think the public are sick of paying for expensive royal commissions that yield no result. And if things were set up properly, we wouldn't have these problems in the first place. And we wouldn't be having these expensive inquiries and wasteful government spending. Authorised by Darren Bazenko for the United Australia Party, Brisbane. Freedom, growth, equality and security. These are the values Australia stands for. Over the last three years, the Liberal Party has led Australia through turbulent times towards record economic growth. It is with that spirit in my heart that I stand before you today as the Liberal candidate for Maribyrnong. I came to Australia in the pursuit of a better life there began a long journey of an independent woman. Whatever path I took, Australia nurtured me and empowered me to grow as a successful entrepreneur, a caring mother and a responsible individual. It has given me its best and I believe it is my time to give my best back to the country. For over decades, Maribyrnong has seen nothing but stagnation and we all know it deserves better. Every family, every local business, every person in Maribyrnong should be supported on their path to prosperity. I am Mira De Silva, your Liberal candidate for Maribyrnong. What about making a vaccine mandatory? I know it's going to happen in aged care for aged care workers. What about elsewhere? I think, first of all, it'd be good if enough people who wanted to be vaccinated could get vaccinated. You know, people waiting for hours on yep. the phone. But, but once vaccines? we've got to that, I don't know if I'd want to force a needle into everyone's arm against their will. 
No, not but saying having, that. No, but having but said as that, as a requirement so, of employment. No, that's right. I'm giving you what I think is the outlier. I don't think if you want to go off the grid, if you genuinely have a some sort of conscience objection, fine. But I think that we're kidding ourselves if we think that we can get on a plane and go to many other parts of the world without getting vaccinated. And I think in, in sectors which are crucial, uh, like aged care, where you're caring for vulnerable people, I think we will get to mandatory vaccination. OK, so sectors like aged care, disability care... Yeah, but I mean, work. it's part of the equation. And what we like to do sometimes is go for the clickbait issue, and that's an important issue. But I think we need to go back to the basics. We've got to tell Australia that we can actually get through this without locking down vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate and prepare for the future. Then I think some of these other issues sort themselves out. There's less concern about the outlier issues. I never thought I'd see a scene where you have people who call themselves Nazis using mm. encrypted message systems to bring in a renter crowd. Uh, I mean, some of those people in the crowd were construction workers, but others, I'm reliably informed, were fake tradies. They'd been down to the reject shop and got themselves a $2 high-vis hoodie so they could pretend they were construction. There is a network of hard-right man-baby Nazis, you know, just people who just want to cause trouble, these man-babies. They want to complain about the vaccination. And it's just... It, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming mm. their way. The fact that they were coming after the union, because the union's actually been showing leadership and saying we want to have a safe workforce and we want to have safe work sites and we want a safe population. The union was targeted because it wasn't following the extremist ideology of a few troublemakers. But Victorians are better than this. We will go one day longer than the idiot fringe and we will beat not only the idiot fringe, but we will also beat this uh, COVID. We will open up, we will get vaccinated, our kids will get back to school, our jobs will resume and we will win this. And the way we're going to win it is not by getting distracted by the give ups. These people have cracked after 18 months. I don't think they're all bad people. 18 months of this has been something which people have never had to go through in their lifetime before. But most of us are tougher than this. The weak way is the louts way. The weak way is what's happening right now on the streets. And Victorians are much stronger and do not underestimate us, Louts. The Victorians that you are ignoring and mocking and pulling down, we'll, we'll get on top of this just like we get on top of the vaccines, just as we get on top of the COVID. That's why I think that uh, the federal government needs to do some basic things. We should be making uh, vaccines in Australia. We shouldn't be relying on imports. I would like to see the five to 11 year olds as soon as possible be able to get vaccinated focus on building some quarantine facilities. Let's get the boosters rolled out. You know, I think people just don't want to be in lockdown any longer. That's the number one job a prime minister's got in Australia at the moment, making sure that we never have to lock down again. And I worry the government's eyes off the ball. I'm Daniel Nyadadic. I'm the Victorian Socialist candidate for the federal seat of Maribyrnong. My mum, born and raised in Malaysia, came here as a nurse, and my dad and his family as refugees from Croatia. For the last 12 years, I've been volunteering and working with asylum seekers and refugees. In both workplaces, I've been the Australian Services Union delegate. I'm a proud trade unionist and also a proud socialist. I first got active in politics in 2000, skipping high school to go to Crown Casino and attend the S11 protests, joining 20,000 people on the street, protesting against the rich and powerful making undemocratic decisions about how the world would be run. Back then, John Howard was in power, famous for whipping up racism against asylum seekers and refugees for political points. This racism has bipartisan support. And what's changed since then? Still, there are dozens of refugees locked up on Swanson Street after years of detention. Both parties use this racism, just as both parties have come together recently to give tax cuts to the rich. This is billions of dollars that could be used during the pandemic for community services, healthcare and welfare. It's important to stand up to this right-wing bipartisan politics. They put profit and wealth before ordinary people. We think it should be people before profit. If you agree, you should join and support Victorian Socialists.